Good evening, my name is Israel Fritchie, and tonight I invite you to come along with me as I peel back the curtains and give you a small peek into the big adventure that is the spooky world of Hearstcon. The Denver Hearst Association, the organization behind Hearstcon, was founded all the way back in 1996 by Jeff Brown and Zachary Byron Helms. Their inaugural meeting taking place during a blizzard hosted a grand total of four Hearst drivers. Today, the club hosts over 50 members. The Denver Hearst Association began HearstCon 17 years ago, all the way back in 2007. Yeah, my name is Zachary Byron Helm, and I have been doing HearstCon since 2007. Way, way, way back in the day, uh, a friend of mine was remarking on the fact that goth people will make their bedroom goth or their locker at school goth, but nobody really had a goth car. And I kind of started thinking about that. And I thought, yeah, what would a goth car be? And I thought, oh yeah, they have these cars that carry dead people. And I didn't really know much about it. And I got into it for the shock value. But as time went on, I just grew really, really inured and enamored by the, the style, by the actual mechanics of it. So nowadays, I don't really even think as much about the morbid aspects of the cars. I'm, I'm really much more into the craftsmanship. Today, Hearstcon is an event that draws people from all across the country who come here to show off their vehicles. I'm Mike Brown and I hail all the way from Michigan. So I drove 1,254 miles to come here. Uh, I've been doing this since 2019. I bought her in 2019. And I've been road tripping a lot of different Hearst shows. And these beautiful vehicles are not the only things people come to this event to see. There are also bands and dancers who come here and perform for the attendees. There are also vendors who come here and sell things such as handmade jewelry, hand-painted art prints, and other handmade items. But why do people find hearses so attractive? Let's find out from one of the drivers themselves. I think people are obviously curious because you get this many hearses together in one place, people are curious. But death is an eventuality we are all going to have to deal with, ourselves, our loved ones. And it's nice to be able to get a little bit comfortable with the concept before it's too late. These drivers and collectors come from every walk of life and every cultural background to come and celebrate the spooky and the macabre at this annual event. Uh, hello, I'm Captain Spooky. Uh, I am a sideshow performer. I do blockhead and fire performance, fire eating, fire breathing. Uh, I have owned my hearse for four years now, but I've been coming to HearseCon for over a decade now. The inspiration to enter this world comes from many different sources. From seeing a hearse drive by, to simply wanting one, to coming to one of these events and getting inspired and saying, hey, I want one of those. I saw when I first moved to Denver, the coolest car I've ever seen. This car right here. It was a 1939 Cadillac hearse with carved panels. It was like the coolest old antique hearse. Look at it. It's like 1939. I saw that car when I first moved here and I thought, that is the coolest car I've ever, ever seen. Every driver or collector here entered this world due to an occurrence or an event like the one you just heard. Every driver here has a story similar to that one. I mean, I think that there's a lot of people who follow the goth aesthetic who like to come to something like this. I think that there are a lot of people who aren't into it who like to come to just look around, you know, because you get to be a tourist for the day and kind of see how the other half lives. And then I think there's a, a very, very large contingent of people who are into Halloween things. They're into horror. But they don't they don't follow any sort of certain aesthetic you would never know that these people are huge fans of horror and spooky things entering this world is anything but casual these cars require hard work constant upkeep and dedication upkeep too that can oftentimes be very expensive um, my future plans would probably be to, probably be to get everything running because not right now everything i have is not running for my future <laughs> i would like to trick her out more 
I would like to make her more girly. Um, her name is Vanity, so we'd like to let her live up to the name. I'd like to do some stuff to the roof. But for now, she, she is what she is, and we love her. If this little peek has inspired you, do your research. Make sure you can learn everything there is to before you fully commit. And obviously, the biggest resources at your disposal is going to be Google. This can lead you to Hearst Clubs, associations, or meetups in your area. The one I have a bit of a soft spot for, maybe just because they're local, is the Denver Hearst Association. This website is highly informative. It contains a Q&A section that answers various questions such as where can you find a hearse the best kind to buy even answers questions like what kind of insurance I should get it definitely gives you suggestions on that as well just because these parts for those cars are oftentimes if not always custom made which can become very pricey even something as simple as a windshield or a window, a side window to these cars need to be custom made. So I would highly suggest you check out that website, check out other websites, find local meetups in your area and go and speak to these drivers, these collectors. And I am sure they'd be more than happy to tell you their experiences and how they came to be in this world and more than happy to share this knowledge with you so again get out there and find your path in this journey i hope you enjoyed this little peek behind the curtain and i hope it has inspired you until then though i say farewell <laughs>